Welcome to the Open Dental Managing Recall List webinar. In this training, we will cover recall list setup, customizing recall notices, using the recall list filters, sending recall reminders by mail, email, or text, managing the recall list by phone, setting recall statuses, and scheduling recall appointments from the recall list. We'll begin with the recall list setup. On the top menu, we're going to go ahead and go to Setup, Appointments, and recall. This is the setup recall screen. Here we can set up recall reminder messages, reminder intervals, and the recall list default options. As you can see, the top portion of this window shows all of the recall messages. The remind column tells us when the reminder will be used. For example, this message would be used as a first reminder. All is used on aggregated messages, which are grouped family messages. The mode column, this column right here, signifies when the message will be used based on the method of delivery. So you might have a first reminder with a specific message when sent by email and a second first reminder with a different message when sent by postcard. The third column is just for general guidance about the message and its use. Here in the message column, is where you can see the message that will send with that reminder. To change the message of the reminder, simply double click on the message of the corresponding reminder number and mode, and then enter the desired text and click OK to save. You also have the option of, of including variable messages. Variables are in brackets and will pull information directly from the database into the message. For example, this shows right here as name F, you are due. But when the message sends out to our patient Jane, it will read, Jane, please call our office today. You can add several different variables to messages, including name FL for patient first and last name, name F for the first name only, and family list for a list of first names and recall dates for all family members when the group family options is selected in the recall list default view. You can also add due date to show the date of the recall is due, clinic name to pull in the name of the patient's default clinic, clinic phone pulls in the clinic phone number, practice name will display the practice name and practice phone number. If your office is signed up to use the web scheduling recall e-service, you can also use the URL variable to pull in the unique link that patients can use to schedule the recall appointment online. We also have a list of the available variables on our website. And let me go ahead and bring up that website for you guys. And as you can see on our website here at opendental.com slash manual slash recall setup dot html, you can go ahead and find those variables down here with the list of the variables that we have available for recalls. Moving on, in the bottom portion of this window, right down here, you're able to set the recall list defaults. Here on the left side, you'll set the status options for recall sent by a specific mode, the status for mailed recalled will be applied when a recall postcard is printed. Similarly, the status for emailed recall is applied when a recall is sent via email. The status for text recall is applied when a recall reminder is sent via text using web scheduling recall. And the status for emailed and text recall will be applied when a recall reminder is emailed and texted using web scheduling recall. These status options determine which recall status is automatically applied when a recall reminder is sent and status options can be customized in setup and definitions, recall slash unscheduled status. Below that, you can enter the number of postcards you want printed, right down here, per sheet of paper and select whether or not to show the practice return address. This box right here allows you to highlight the recall types you want to show in the recall list and send recall reminders to. To select multiples, you'll just click and drag or press the control key while clicking each type. Typically, just Perio and Profi are chosen, but you can customize recall types and choose to show those as well. Over here, 
you can go ahead and set the recall list default view filter and sort options. To group by families in the recall list, just select the group families box as we have shown here. The days past box indicates the default start date that shows in the recall list. The farther back you go, the fewer patients will slip through the cracks. And if using web scheduling recall, the days past box cannot be blank. The day's future box determines the default end date. Leave this blank to include all future recalls. It's also okay to leave it blank if using web scheduling recall. Next, you can select one of the exclude options to exclude certain patients from recall list. You can either choose to exclude patients that have a recall appointment scheduled, which is what option we have selected here, or you can exclude patients who have any appointment scheduled. Below that, you can set the reminder intervals to also show in list if a certain number of days have passed since the patient's last reminder. Each patient will first show up on the list when their recall due date falls within the date range you've set in days past slash days future. Once a reminder is sent, they will not appear on the list again until they are due for their next reminder. The initial reminder value will be the number of days from the first reminder until the second reminder, reminder is triggered. For example, if set for 90, the second reminder will not be triggered until 90 days after the first reminder was sent. If using web scheduling recall, this number cannot be zero. The second or more reminder is the number of days from the second reminder until the third and subsequent reminders are triggered. This value cannot be zero if using web scheduling recall. The max number of reminders value is the number of reminders that will be sent before the patient is removed from the list. For example, setting this to three will include patients in the list until a fourth reminder is sent. If you do not want to set a maximum, just leave this box blank. Over to the right, you can adjust the postcard position in inches to change the offset when printing. And then you have the option of selecting when an email reminder is sent. For has email address, this option right here, email will be the default contact method when a patient has an email address entered and no other preferred method is selected for recall. For email is preferred recall method, email will be a patient's default contact method only when email is sent as the preferred confirmation or recall method. When finished setting your recall list defaults, just click OK to save. To access the recall list, go to the appointment module, click this little notepad above the calendar, and then click on recall. The list will show any patient who is due for a recall but isn't yet scheduled, if that's the setting you applied in the recall setup window. Here at the top of the recall list window, you can adjust the view criteria to expand or limit the results shown. After any changes that are made are made, you'll need to click the refresh list right here to update the results. Changing anything from this window will not change the default recall list settings. The from and to dates by default are based on the days past and days future values that were set in the recall setup window but can be changed to view a list of the patients that have recall due dates within any given date range. If a, the to date is left blank, it will include patients that have never had a recall procedure or set complete. The show reminders option allows you to view only patients with a specific number of reminders. If you'd like to see patients with a certain recall type, you're able to select which one here with the recall type drop down. And you can also go ahead and sort the list by due date, alphabetically, or billing type. The provider drop down gives you the ability to only view patients for a specific provider. If you are using clinics, you will see a clinic drop down right about here. And if you use public health enabled, you will see a site drop down just like we have here. The group families option allows you to send just one reminder per family when checked. 
the show conflicting types option will only show patients who recall type conflicts with the procedures on a scheduled recall appointment. I'll click it and I have nothing, so no conflicting types. For example, it will show a profi patient who have a, a scheduled appointment with perio procedures. This only applies to perio and profi recalls. The last filter option is to include reminded. This will show patients that have already received reminders and would otherwise be filtered out according to the rules from setup recall. To the right of the view filters, you can use the set status function to change the status of a patient's recall. These statuses can be customized in definitions, recall slash and scheduled status. To change the status, highlight one or more patients, then select a status from the status dropdown and click set. Once set, the status chosen will show in the status column. In addition to setting statuses, you can also choose which email address should be used when manually sending an email reminder. To manually email a reminder, highlight the patient in the recall list. Select the email address you want that email to send from within the email dropdown. and click the email button here at the bottom. If no patients are selected when clicking the email button, Open Dental will auto-select all patients who have email as a preferred recall method. Moving on to the recall list grid. This is where you will see patients who are due for recall and their recall information. You'll see the date of the recall of a recall type is due here in the due date column. If the date is blank, the patient has yet to have a recall procedure set complete. You'll see the patient name, age, type of recall due, and interval associated with that recall type. Also displayed is the number of reminders sent since the patient's last recall appointment and the date the last reminder was sent. The contact column will display the information associated with the patient's preferred recall method. For instance, if the patient's preferred recall method is set as work phone, the phone number entered in the work phone field will show here. The status column will display the status of a patient's recall and is used to track recall communications about a patient's unscheduled recall appointment. The status can be updated by double clicking on the recall and selecting a status or as I mentioned before, using the status option. The note column will show any administrative note that is entered on the patient's recall. This note can be edited from the list by double clicking on the patient recall from the list. You can also edit the patient's recall information in this window as well. Let's go ahead and just make a note that the patient tends to wait until the last minute. This note will be deleted every time the patient's recall resets. If you needed to go to the patient account or family module, you can simply right click and select either see family or see account to be taken to the patient's family module or account module. You can also do this by highlighting the patient and select either the go to family or go to account buttons here below the grid. Also at the bottom, there are several options that can be used to manage the recall list. You can preview postcards from the selected patients by clicking on the postcard preview button. So we're going to go ahead and highlight on these and click on postcard preview. If you're happy with how they look, you can print from this window. So we're going to go ahead and click on the print. When this window closes, you'll get this prompt asking if you'd like the status to be changed for all patients selected. 
I'm going to go ahead and click yes. Now, if you realize that patients were accidentally marked as contacted for the reminders failed to send, you can use the undo button. In this window, you'll confirm the date to undo. Any recall notes, statuses, and comm logs that were created when the recall was marked as contacted will be removed from patients' accounts. So let's go ahead and click OK on that. And we see this message, and we're going to go ahead and click OK and done. And now the patients are back on the recall list. If you have a custom postcard that you just need to print labels for, you have the options of printing single labels or sheets of labels. The single labels button will print a single address label for each patient selected using the default printer for labels, single, which can be set by going to file and then printers. When printed, the recall status for those patients will change to mailed postcard. If you prefer to print sheets of labels, you can use the label preview button to generate address labels for the selected patients. This option will print 30 standard labels per sheet, like with single labels, when printed, this will also change the selected patient recall status to mailed postcard. As with postcards, you can see when you choose the print labels, so let's go ahead and choose print labels. Label preview. And print. As with, with postcards, you can see when we choose the print labels, we have a pop-up asking if the label's printed. I'm going to click OK, and as you can see, the selected patients no longer will show on the list. You also have the option to send recall reminders by email. Simply click the email button to send the reminders to selected patients. Email button down here. If you'd like to print the recall list, you can print. You can do this here. Print list. The Run Report button is helpful if you need to create a recall report for a letter merge. As I mentioned earlier, you can use the Go To Family button to go to the Selected Patients Family module and the Go To Account button to go to the Patients Account module. The Com button can be used to create a communication log for each selected patient. Keep in mind if you have multiple patients selected, the exact same Com log will be made for each patient. You can also schedule recall appointments directly from the list by using the Sketch Patient and Sketch Family buttons. Sketch Patient will create an appointment for just the patient selected to be scheduled, while Sketch Family will create appointments for each of the related family members. If your office is signed up for a web scheduled recall, you can use the Web Sketch button to send recall uh, reminders to patients who have email or text message as their preferred recall method. Now, going back to the top, there's a Reminders tab. This is where you can see a list of patients who were recently contacted regarding their recall. You can change the view criteria by selecting a different date range up here. After changing the criteria, you want to click the Refresh List button to show the results. The reminder list grid shows the patients who have been recently contacted and information about their recall. You'll be able to see the date and time the reminder was sent, the name of the patient the reminder was sent to, the type of reminder, whether that be, be by mail, email, or phone, and the age of the patient. If it is a web sketch reminder that was sent, you'll also see the patient's recall due date, recall type, and recall statuses. Now that wraps up the managing recall list with Open Dental. If you have any questions about something that was not covered during this webinar, please contact our office. Our contact information is located on our website at opendental.com under contact information. Here you can find our phone number and hours of operation. You can also chat with us or send us an email. For other webinars, simply go to search, go to search on our website, type in webinars, and you can see a list of all our pre-recorded webinars.